Hey guys, happy Thursday. Meteorologist John Hominick here with Empire Weather. Hope you guys are doing well. Having a great week so far. Uh, we're getting through it over here and um, happy to provide an update to our planting season forecast. We released our initial one about a month ago, uh, just at the end of February. I just want to provide an update as to where we are at the moment. March forecast has gone pretty much as expected, but let's go back and, and look at the current conditions and see where we've been. So we're looking at the precip anomaly over the last 90 days and there are still even you know so since where we came from february to now there are still two areas that really stick out right we have our south and southwestern plains uh dryness which has been prolonged over the last 90 to 180 days and then we have this wet active pattern that has extended really from the northern plains into the upper midwest and even down here into parts of the mississippi river valley the delta uh, and the Ohio Valley as well. These areas up here in the Northern Plains, some of these regions running 200% of normal precipitation. So very, very wet here uh, in the Northern Plains. And obviously the dryness really has, has started to build and continue in parts of the Southwestern Plains from Kansas into Western Oklahoma and the Texas Panhandle. Looking at uh, where we've been in March, or excuse me, in, in uh, March so far for, for temperatures, um, in addition to that moisture that we've seen recently, March has been quite cool. Look at the uh, cooler temperatures extending down here. This is through March 21st, but really essentially through a lot of the agriculture belt, at least a couple degrees below normal. The majority of our warmth has been relegated to the Gulf Coast, uh, as well as in parts of the Northeast United States. Um, parts of the Northern Plains have been several degrees below normal, 10 to 15. Uh, and then the Intermountain West obviously has been very, very cold and active as well. But uh, it's fair to say that in March, this colder than normal uh, pattern has really extended throughout a large majority of the agriculture belt as well. And so here's what that leaves us with soil moisture as of March 20th. Um, just looking at the latest uh, data here, obviously updating uh, every several days, the majority of our very dry conditions match up well with what we were just looking at in terms of precip departure. Um, that's where the, the soil moisture root zone and groundwater uh, is obviously very, very poor into this general vicinity. It does extend out a bit still um, into parts of Iowa, even into parts of eastern Kansas and northwestern Oklahoma. Um, and the one difference that we've seen recently is that this northern plains region has started to see uh, you know, an improvement in that soil moisture. A lot of that has to do with the, the recent precipitation, the snowpack that we have, and that's going to present a whole other set of risks. If you go back to this overall look, there's two areas, two different risks that we're going to be dealing with across the ag belt as we move into the planting uh, season. We're going to have the wet active sort of uh, spring melt flooding risks here in the northern plains and we're going to have our very dry risks persisting into spring in the southern plains as a result so let's look at the next couple days right we have a very active pattern in place moving into the late week and early weekend uh, a frontal boundary is going to develop from the eastern plains into uh, south southeastern missouri and then into parts of the ohio valley so figure parts of kentucky southern illinois indiana and ohio the models the latest model data suggests ample moisture and a stalled front sitting over this area for several days. Essentially, from late tonight into Friday and continuing into Saturday, we're expecting rain across this area. A deep low pressure system will form out of the southern plains into parts of uh, Arkansas and then Missouri. So some very light scattered precipitation here across the central plains. The majority of your heavy stuff is along that stalled front and then down here, into the parts of the delta where we're expecting the potential for significant severe weather on Friday. But as this system evolves, we'll also get some snow in parts of eastern Iowa into Wisconsin and northwestern Illinois. And then the focus otherwise is going to be that very heavy precipitation here into the Ohio Valley. The model's really focusing in on the potential for heavy rains. Here's the next five days of precipitation. So we have some rain here across eastern Colorado and western Kansas, which will take every drop we can get in this vicinity. But the focus here from eastern Oklahoma into southeastern Missouri and then obviously central and southern Illinois and Indiana and Ohio is that front that stalls out. And when you have an ensemble mean, zooming in here on the Ohio Valley, when you have an ensemble mean that's forecasting uh, upwards of four inches of rain in some locations, again, that's the average of 51 different ensemble members. 
that's a really significant signal. So needless to say, across this area through late week and into the weekend, the possibility does exist for flooding, localized flooding here, and ample moisture uh, along this front. This is what we don't like to see, is we don't like to see these stalled fronts and these continued signals for rain, and that's what we see here on the models late Thursday into, into Saturday. It's when these fronts stall and you get this continuous rain training along the same boundary that you can get some flooding. Um, and that's what we're watching for through the weekend. This system will move out of the way uh, late this weekend into early next week, and things are expected to clear out a bit during that time frame with the models improving the weather for the weekend. But as we move into the middle part of next week, there are signals for another strong storm to eject out into the plains late uh, middle, probably late Wednesday into Thursday and then Friday. And again, we see more rain coming into this general vicinity as this system evolves. And so the, the pattern really continues to look quite active uh, as we move through the next several days. And so that, that precipitation risk here is going to build. If, if you roll the ensembles forward, uh, really from, from late uh, next week into the week beyond, those totals only go up. And this is a very wet pattern across this general vicinity as we move into the end of March and even the early part of April. So what's going on, right? What's causing that? The first thing that sticks out, we're looking now at the mid-levels of the atmosphere. The first thing that sticks out is we have a gradient, a height and temperature gradient. And this is where our storm systems love to develop we have a ridge in the southeast United States that's bringing us moisture back up this way, and we have our trough coming in from the southwest and the intermountain west here. And the result as these troughs eject eastward is you get storms, you get a low pressure development, and you get precipitation in this vicinity. Now as we roll this forward into late March and early April, that same pattern keeps appearing. Here's late March and early April, once again, we have a gradient over the central United States with a southeast ridge, and we're likely to see another storm system. And as we roll this forward again into early April, here comes again, here comes that same ridge, and our same storms are going to eject. So all of this is to say that the pattern continues to look quite active uh, with multiple fronts and systems coming through in late March and early April. Uh, and that's likely going to keep us warmer down in this general vicinity, uh, allow the precipitation to form and develop here, and keep a cooler risk built into the northern plains at the same time. If we look at the temperature forecast, and we'll look at it in seven-day increments, the models are in good agreement that that's how this is going to look. Here's where your warmer risks are going to be into the first week of April, and here's where we're going to continue to see that cold lingering across the northern plains, several degrees below normal in parts of the Dakotas and into Minnesota and Wisconsin, and that colder air also lingering down further south into parts of the Ohio Valley and the northeast states as well. So the southern plains likely are going to be the first to warm up here, and it's becoming clear as we head into April that we're going to be looking at lingering cold up here in the northern plains as well. Looking at the latest European weeklies, taking us into the end of April, this precipitation signal catches your eye because the really a lot of the central and eastern ag belt regions here are signaled for well above normal precipitation. We talked in our last video about our analog signaling that, and now we're starting to see it here on the weeklies. I wouldn't pay too much attention to the specific details or the exact location, what this is signaling overall is an active pattern across the central and eastern belt and a little bit of a drier pattern here across the Dakotas and maybe parts of Minnesota, as well as, again, unfortunately, in the southwest plains. So what is causing this, right? And does this have any footing in the forecast? One of the things that sticks out, we're going to look at the long range stuff now, which takes us into April and then May. One of the things that sticks out to us here is the MJO forecast. For me, this is a major uncertainty as we head into April. Uh, what we're looking at here is, is basically the progression of convection and thunderstorm activity across, across the tropical Pacific. So if you look at the bottom here, here are your different phases of the MJO. And here are your different geographical regions, including your, your ENSO, your Nino regions. Here's South America. There's Brazil. Uh, and here's uh, really just kind of the very tip of Mexico is what you can see here heading into North America. So North America would be up here on this map. But... What we're looking at here is a progression of this convection across these regions here. So what we want to see if we have an MJO wave or progressing through the, the tropical Pacific is we want to see these greens and blues indicating uh, thunderstorm activity. We want to see them slide all the way this way, and that tells you that we have a consistent MJO propagation. But what we see here is a signal that becomes very muted 
in this area, right? The model's picking up on this MJO progression through about April 1st, right? Here's the, the dates on the left. And then it just sort of stalls out and drops out. And there's a very, very muted signal. But the reason this is muted is because if you go and look at the individual members uh, of the MJO, we're looking at it as a circle here with your different phases, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. By the time we get to day 10, which is the orange dots, look at the ridiculous amount of spread here in possible locations uh, that the model is suggesting the MJO could be. There is just a tremendous amount of spread as to how this is gonna progress. We came out of this big MJO wave the last couple days here, uh, and weeks, and now there is just a ton of uncertainty as to what's going to happen moving forward. And that is why we see this muted signal here on this graph. Once we get to about April 1st, the model says, I don't know what's going to be happening. So we take the long range forecast with a grain of salt based on models, but that doesn't mean we can't get an idea as to where this is going to go, right? Let's look at the current sea surface temperature anomalies. There's a couple things that stick out. First of all, we have a decaying La Nina. We know that La Nina died. We have some cooler lingering waters in the Central Pacific. Warmer waters emerging off the coast of South America. But we also have a notable pool of warm water here north of Hawaii, negative PDO. And we have cooler waters lingering off the west coast of the US and a very warm Gulf of Mexico. Um, so there are hallmarks and earmarks here to this pattern that we can use. And what we did is we went and tried to grab some analog years that were similar. So in other words, years that were also transitioning out of a La Nina into neutral or El Nino, and years that had a similar structure to the pattern across the Pacific Ocean uh, and in the stratosphere and had a similar winter evolution. And the years that we came up with here uh, were 1951, 57, 65, 72, 76, 2002, and 2009. And when we put that on a uh, map here and looked at the sea surface temperatures, we got a pretty good match. We have a weakening La Nina signal here in the Central Pacific. We have a warm pool north of Hawaii. We have our cool waters off the coast of California and the western North America. We have some warm water emerging here off South America. And that matches very closely to what we see right now uh, in, the, in the Pacific with the sea surface temperature anomalies. So we got a very good match uh, to what we see currently with our analog years. So what did they look like moving forward? Well, here's what they look like in April in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. The first thing we see is a large ridge in the Gulf of Alaska. And what that often means is that the jet is gonna come underneath that ridge. So we have a large ridge here and a trough digging down into the southwestern United States. And that can be a prime time signal for precipitation to move into the central US. Uh, this is a fairly active looking signal to me. We have plenty of momentum coming out of here. It's a little bit of a split flow look uh, but overall, this is the kind of pattern that can be active. With that being said, there's still some blocking showing up here in central Canada. So that leads me to believe that the possibility exists that the northern plains here, as we move into April, could remain a little chillier. And we're going to have to watch that. Despite the active flow, we do have a block. So it's very possible that we see a cooler risk in the northern plains. And let's look at it. Here's a precipitation uh, on those analog years from April into May. So not a shocker. There's a lot of precipitation because we just looked at the fact that there's a trough sitting here in the western U.S. and a jet coming out that's going to be sending these disturbances in. So it's not surprising the models are saying or the analogs are saying, hey, guess what? This is an active pattern across the ag belt as we move into April and May, uh, especially here across parts of the southern plains into the Delta, into the Ohio Valley. And these are areas that we know in the upcoming days are also going to see precipitation if you're catching my drift. If we look at temperatures during that, that time frame just in April, guess what? That colder risk we talked about, here it is on the analogs as well. We can see our colder than normal temperatures across the northern um, agriculture regions from the Dakotas down into Minnesota, parts of Iowa, uh, Wisconsin, maybe even leaking into parts of the Ohio Valley. And your warmer weather is down here, your southern plains into the southeast delta regions. And that gradient between the warmth and the cold is where you're going to very likely going to see precipitation risks. And that's where the models have, not surprisingly, uh, that precipitation risk on these analog years. So Obviously, the signal is there for an active pattern, a chillier one across the northern plains and parts of the Great Lakes into April. Um, it does warm up as we get into May. We can, we can pull up sort of uh, very quickly here, just look at those analogs into May. Um, and even though it's colder to start 
in the northern plains and Great Lakes. It does warm up a bit into May. You don't really see much of an uh, overly strong signal here for cold. The chillier air now actually compared to normal is down here. So um, it is a definitely a chilly signal in April though. And so the focus here for me is we have a precipitation signal uh, in an area that has been quite active, especially right here. Um, and we also have a chilly signal up here uh, in the northern plains. That creates some concern. And especially given the snowpack that we have in place, potential for runoff, right? We know that this area up here has seen a lot of moisture. We just talked about it to start the video. So looking at the National Weather Service and checking out the, the flooding outlook, it's not a surprise that we're seeing some concern here in the eastern Dakotas and parts of western Minnesota, especially now Minnesota down into Iowa along the Mississippi. We're also seeing some concern here for spring flooding and even down into parts of Iowa, Missouri, uh, and Illinois. We're also seeing the concern build there. So as a whole, what we're looking at here across the vast majority of the northern plains into parts of the upper Midwest is actually a heightened risk for flooding concerns and factor in the chillier weather as well and it's very possible that we have some hazards coming up here as we head into plan. It's not necessarily a you know, run around screaming like your head just got cut off the thing, but it's definitely worth keeping a very close eye on this because this is a very heightened risk uh, for flooding heading into spring. Uh, especially given the snowpack that we have and, and what's expected from a melting perspective. When we look at the precip forecast as well, moving forward, again, I'll draw back on the European weeklies. This adds to the concern as well, given the fact that the weeklies are suggesting that it's going to be quite active. So again, I want to go back and draw, start from the very beginning, and then we'll, we'll finish this out. It has been really active across this northern uh, third here of the Ag Belt, and it's been very dry down here. So those two areas of concern, this is area number one, very dry, need moisture badly. This is concern area number two, where it's been too wet uh, and active, and there's a lot of snowpack and a lot of runoff potential here. And the river flood outlook, especially here across the uh, northern plains in the upper Midwest, suggests the possibility of that flooding causing some operational impacts as well. And that leads us to our final chart here, which is actually from our um, uh, plant season outlook, uh, which we put out to our clients. Just zooming in on it here. Basically what this is is a uh, concern chart. So where are we concerned? And that is going to highlight our two areas, right? We have our southwestern plains concern for dryness. This we mentioned was area number one. And then from the eastern Dakotas down into Minnesota and Iowa, and even into parts of the upper Midwest and Ohio Valley, this is concern area number two. And the reason for the concern here is very different, right? This is a warmer and drier concern. This area is a chillier concern and a concern for, for moisture, uh, an overabundance of moisture. Again, going back to the European weeklies uh, and taking us through the end of April, this pattern looks quite active. Um, and even the analogs also signaling that active pattern is going to be here as well. So we like moisture, right? But we don't want too much of it. And we also don't want too much of this river flooding uh, to become an issue. And I think this is going to have to really be watched across the northern plains as we move into planting season here in the next uh, couple of weeks. Thank you so much, guys, for, for watching this video and checking this out with us. We're, we're so excited about the interaction we've had from our clients over the last couple of days and weeks. We have a lot more of these coming up. Our clients get these video every day. Um, this one's public for everyone to enjoy, but we break this stuff down for our clients every day. If you'd like to try our services out, uh, just give us a shout. We're more than happy to provide a free trial. Uh, and for our clients, um, you know, we always recommend sharing uh, our information, our services as much as you can. We get the word out. We do a fully organic sales process here. No ads, none of that hype and all that uh, BS that you see all over the, uh, social media. Um, we like to keep it word of mouth. So anything you can do to share our information is very helpful to us and we really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching guys. We'll be back. Uh, our clients, obviously another update coming tomorrow morning. Uh, if you have any questions, give us a shout. Otherwise have a great Thursday guys. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.